Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to the IRAC 413.5 Championship here at lovely Suzuka International Raceway. I'm Austin Knight. I'm joined by Alessandro Taladane with Marco Barbonari in the production booth, and you're here watching Apex Racing TV. Hi, Alessandro? Oh, yep. Well, I, start of season with first uh, best up, I guess. Oh yeah, we always do that. Uh, we are so professional, especially when we are in the booth with Marco Barbanera working this beautiful camera. Who hopefully, will work better than the international IMSA TV stream. Ooh, oh, <laughs> I mean, having some trouble today for the seven twelve hours, but yeah, what a great uh, race track to start the season. Also. Yeah, great race and a great track uh, to start the season with. Probably, I would say the uh, best. Uh, one of the best opening tracks I know for the Formula 3.5 series here in lovely Japan. And as we're looking at our defending Formula 3.5 champion by one point, James J. Pinsir as he takes to his qualifying lap. Yeah, a lot of uh, familiar faces, but new names also for this uh, first uh, round of the Formula Renault 3.5. Challenge here on a racing uh, on board with James uh, on this uh, beautiful uh, racetrack. I actually got the chance to do a race this afternoon, and I must say that even though I'm not the biggest lover of the car to race because uh, I'm talentless, uh, I really, really loved it. And uh, the racing here is going to be very, very interesting, especially with this uh, high downforce package all the drivers uh, tend to use uh, on this uh, straight uh, coming to 130R and uh, DRS is, is going to be wide. Yeah, the racing here is going to be a lot of drafting, as you mentioned, with the high downforce, but it's also going to be pretty difficult throughout most of this race because near the end of the race, your tire wear is going to fall off and it's going to be very hard uh, for you to keep those tires in check near the end of the race. So you got to get those moves done pretty early, but the times that people are putting down right now, absolutely uh, smashing the board with Paul Ilbrig currently on pole by one thousandth. The no, one tenth of a second. They both started to you, okay? Yeah, Paul Ilbring uh, is uh, definitely one of the guys that want to bounce back after uh, uh, not so good season one oh, here in no. 2021. And uh, now we have, uh, oh boy, uh, will we have a multi 21 here today? Oh, we might have them. Um, we might do as they're currently first to second. Uh, Robert Talta takes provisional pole with uh, Kitaro Yusa in his home Grand Prix, uh, home race, not Grand Prix, though this should be a Grand Prix, uh, is currently sitting on the front row right now. Sam Borski takes third place. Uh, they still got another lap to go, so it's not definite right now, but uh, yeah, that Ferrari scheme, uh, very popular. Yeah, and we have plenty of old school liveries uh, for this from uh, Renault 3.5, as we look at Joaquin Hernandez Hill, in his uh, eighth uh, car, and uh, Paul Hilbrin trying to improve his lap time. So now we will uh, soon have uh, the second lap for most of the drivers, and uh, I bet the standing will look uh, quite a bit different uh, in a few minutes. Yeah, our time tower might be uh, changed around, so nothing is definite right now. Just provisional. Paul Ilbrin comes up, jumps up to fourth place, and I need to talk to Paul Ilbrin and. Well, there we go. Ilbrick up into provisional pole by two tenths of a second. As uh, there's Kota Miwa, uh, not happy about their second lap, currently sitting in 19th. Erica Lindstrom just cut the grass right there. And we got a McLaren <laughs> from Bo Dixon, who jumps up into fifth. And oh, spinning out of the final quarter, Benjamin Barto. Yeah, almost crossing the finish, start finish line uh, in reverse, uh, as uh, also Dennis Cornu finished his uh, second lap, but he will still be sitting in 23rd place, the last of the drivers with a valid lap time, Benjamin Barte Barateau, unfortunately in the 22 car, uh, did get his two laps in, but uh, did not get a body lap time, so we start from the back. Zemborski jumps up in the second, looking at Francisco Ramirez. Right there, coming out of the chicane across the line. And here he goes. Ramirez, does he improve on that laptop? He does. He jumps up into 14th. 
And back to our defending champion, James J. Pinser, currently sitting in seventh place. He's the last one on a valid lap here in Suzuka. That out with no issues. Uh, this uh, corner, uh, even with the RS open for these guys, not for me, I crashed uh, multiple times trying that. As uh, James is about to cross the start finish line for his second and last flying lap, uh, and uh, it's fourth. He moves up to fourth. Okay, it's a very good effort. Look how tight is the field: the seven tenths between P1 and P14 for Francisco Ramirez. Absolutely fascinating uh, gap between all these drivers. Only 30 seconds left. Uh, someone still uh, circulating on track, getting uh, familiar with the temperatures. But uh, 20 degrees today, Austin, uh, is the weather here in Suzuka. I think uh, tires won't be really much of an issue, but uh, you know that uh, making a pass after a, a bit is going to be very, very complicated because uh, of dirty air which is always a big thing here. On yeah, track. especially in that opening section, dirty air is going to be all over the place and causing a lot of problems. But the best place to uh, get rid of dirty air is on the front row. And that go and on pole position in our starting front row is Paul Ilbrick and Ever Samborski. Both of these drivers looking to have a much better season, followed by Robert Tarleton and James J. Pings here. Jorge Lopez right behind him with Kentaro Yusai at his home race, followed by Bo Dixon and Josh Stewart. Yuki Shirakawa at their home race in that 21, followed by Theodore Burns, Andreas Fraslite, Alessandro Roccatello in 12th place, followed by Johan Gill, Francisco Marias, Erica Lindstrom, Masafumi Abrame, Rob Crouch, Jamie Bird, Eduardo Marquez, Kota Miwa, Emir Carr, Enrico Bertot, Dennis Corno, and Benjamin Barteo and 24th completing the final spot of this 24 car grid here in Suzuka. Yeah, what a, a packed grid today to open up the season. Drivers already gridding out uh, and uh, I think we will see our usual also. And speaking yeah. of packed, we got a very packed uh, SOF right now. 4.3K at strength of field. And uh, well, we have more 6,000 I-rating drivers uh, in this field right now, uh, being led by James Pinkster, uh Edward Samborski, Paul Ilbrink, and uh, our top three drivers all in the 6,000 range, and Robert Tarleton. But, hey... Let's talk about Ari. More talk about race. He has five red lights are on, and it's go, go, go here at Suzuka. And what a great start by Talton. Immediately getting ahead of Sam Borski. Already onto the back of Paul Ilbrick. Side by side, heading into one. Talton trying to look around to the outside. Decides to back off right there. A little bit farther behind. A little car going way off the track right there. Was that? I think that might have been a car off there. And sure, Carl was in the wall oh. through the S's. Multi-car, four cars off. Oh, oh the cars got a massive crash. We got a massive crash of six cars yeah, off in the S's. The crowd, uh, Roccatello, car was involved uh, earlier on uh, and thankfully managed uh, to get through it. But uh, what a shame to open the race. Uh, a crunch uh, involving a lot of drivers in the midfield already spreading out the pack uh, as we are now looking at uh, Bo Dixon uh, in this uh, beautiful McLaren drivers with uh, cold tires locking up at the airfield you need to be careful because uh, cold tires uh, are gonna catch a lot of drivers of guard yeah uh, Dennis Corno, Yuki Shirakawa, Eduardo Marquez, Emir Tenod Card, Francesco Ramirez, Andreas Ferraz, Lite, Alessandro Rocatello, Matsupumi Abrame, and Rob Crouch all involved in that incident at the start. Insane first lap. And here comes Robert Tarleton already using DRS, trying to get himself back up into the lead, but it's just not going to be enough as they come into 130R. Paul Ilbring looking onto that inside line. Here comes Tarleton now getting 
His nose chopped off as Ilpert's going to lead them into the chicane and complete the first lap here of season two. Yeah, great style by Paul. It's important to have clean air in this car and uh, at the same time uh, also be able to capitalize on uh, fastest opportunity early on in the race. As uh, we look uh, at all these guys uh, running uh, in a single fight now and uh, here Miu and Barato fighting uh, for position. Barato up already 12 places in one lap. Yeah, you got to keep it clean, and that's what some of these drivers are doing, especially uh, Barto right there as we make our return to the S's. And, uh, well, things have already spread out from our leaders to our, uh, well, chasing field. Let's see a replay here with uh, Emir Khan. So one of the downforce racing cars went out there, and uh, Emir... This came out and oh my goodness, that was a mad hit. And then the car came back onto track and collected more. And honestly, that I think that might have been seven cars involved in there. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. A lot of cars involved. Uh, not much uh, the drivers could do once uh, the crash happened. Uh, the it uh, sent uh, one car straight into the racing line and. Uh, the poor bystanders there had uh, nowhere to go as uh, James uh, J. Pinsker already trying to go out of the uh, oh, Here comes Charlton. Here comes Charlton. Charlton laid all the brakes, trying to hold it around to the outside. Ilbert cut the corner, just a little bit of a lockup right there. Side by side they go, but Ilbert held it around to the outside. And now Charlton still in second place, but here is Edward Samborski and his rear view mirror. Charlton putting into the fastest lap taken by Samborski right now. James Peter just deciding to stay out of this draft like he usually does. Charlton looking down to the inside, side by side, heading into turn one and into turn two. Still side by side as they get extremely close coming out the corner. Ilbert trying to force his way down to the inside. Charlton trying to hold it around the outside as they enter the S's. It's still Paul Ilbrick in the lead. Yeah, great racing. Uh, both drivers giving each other space. Uh, race uh, hard, but uh, clearly don't want to start the season with the incident. Samborski now looks at the outside, but this is definitely not a pass uh, where uh, a place of the track where you can make a pass happen uh, safely. And slides back uh, behind Robert Ardo. Samborski losing a place uh, from uh, where he started on the grid. Oh, no. A little bit of block for Tarleton right there. And uh, Sam Borski, he likes to play a little bit of mind games, but uh, Kentaro Yusa being a uh, great debut into the top uh, top splits. We got a replay of uh, Bertot right here. Is he going to be a spin? Did Is he get that one? Ahead? Ooh, net code a little bit. Oh, oh this is, that was live. That was this live. As Paul Ilbrick managed to pull out a little bit of the gap through Spoon. We ride on board of James J. Pinsner behind Edward Samborski. Our two championship rivals, air quote. They're really good friends, but you know, us here in the media, we like to uh, have a little fun with this. Indeed, as uh, divers uh, still try to find a suitable place. Uh, a suitable corner to make an attack happen. We look uh, now at uh, Lopez. Lopez trying to make a pass on the inside of Stewart, uh, but it uh, doesn't happen. Erica Lindstrom battling out with Jamie Byrne. He's up there in 10th place, and he's, he's well, the Byrne and Burns are racing right now. I'm not sure uh, what happened to James Byrne. Car. Might be a bit thankful also for being involved in the turn one accident and uh, somehow managing to go through the following one. Now let's take a look at the menus. start on board of uh, 10 old car. I know car was the one who uh, went off earlier, so he will have a good view of it, but I think Bo Dixon might have been in the inside. Oh, almost immediate contact with that car off the line. And well, he's just stuck all along for the ride right now, just trying to keep his nose clean. And uh, we all know what's about to happen. Let's see how the wreck started. 
Ooh. Oh, it's just a tap, and then absolutely unavoidance. Uh, I think Neko started it all. But here's Car. You get to see the uh, carnage from up ahead, and Car might just be thinking his lucky stars right there that he just had a little bit of a spin and uh, managed to get a few freebies off of that. Absolutely. Race is long. Uh, many people had to come by pit road and fix their car, so for uh, the, the driver uh, that uh, made a mistake earlier on uh, definitely was uh, very, very lucky and uh, mostly the race is very long. Uh, lap 5 or 21, only 10 minutes in, still plenty of time to make up a lot of spots. Yeah, plenty of time to make up a lot of spots and plenty of times for our leaders who uh, have a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I know nobody's perfect here, but our top drivers, uh, usually the top six, I, all these names we've seen before, except for Yusa. But Katara Yusa, I believe, is extremely on point as well. But most of our top drivers, we've rarely seen them mi make mistakes, especially our top four. Paul Ilbrink, though, he, he, he certainly counteract that bad luck uh, streak he's had in season one and season four of last year. Yeah, that's not and season two, three uh, of last year. Thing because you know what's and about season two of last year. But uh, definitely Paul is showing. Uh, a lot of speed today, as I think a car uh, had a little mistake, uh, dropped down a few places, might be having some trouble. Uh, it's very easy to lose control of the car in... Uh, oh, that's a dangerous look to Denga. That is a dangerous look. He's made the move work and... Oh, too much mustard. Yeah, the first uh, master victim of the season is uh, Emil Carr as we look at uh, Lindstrom and Barat fighting for 11th place. So. Yeah, this is a DRS fight. Here comes Ilbrink on. Here comes Tarleton on Ilbrink. The other way around, Austin. Side by side headed into turn one. Tarleton decided not to uh, challenge that one through the, uh, through the King of Turn 1, but he's been using DRS a lot on Ilbrink, and that's just giving the advantage to Ilbrink heading into the end of the race. Indeed, you need to be very careful using this DRS. Remember, eight uh, DRS is at disposal for uh, these 21 laps to use uh, whenever you want during the race. But uh, they are so key because uh, with uh, such a strong draft, if you can uh, open up a gap with them or uh, just keep up with someone who is using them early on, and then Ooh, you can... Uh, Ilbrink goes wide with the hairpin. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be careful there because uh, it's very easy to lock up the tires. Not uh, here at the hairpin and at the final chicane. Uh, we've seen uh, all week long drivers uh, go too hot into the corner and uh, losing uh, a lot of time. I have not locked up my wheels uh, going into that chicane. I did lap one and went completely straight through the gravel. Now, coming out of that chicane, I did because I was sideways. <laughs> As uh, Tarton looks uh, again to make a pass, but uh, if you are not really side by side through 130 yards... Ooh, Samborski had it off! Samborski is loose! And there's Pacer looking onto his inside! But Pacer could have capitalized all that, decided not to, and... Back to uh, our side-by-side -side race at the front. And it's not really much of a side-by-side -side as Charlton uh, was about three car lengths behind uh, Ilbrick, but that camera shot was way more dramatic than we needed it. Thanks, Marco. We have uh, still this beautiful battle for 11th place also happening in the midfield. With our biggest mover of the race, uh, Benjamin Barato starting all the way in last. I don't think he meant to be last after qualifying, but he just found himself in that. Well, he didn't put in a valid lap. He didn't put in a valid lap, but he spun coming out of the final corner and he kind of crashed the car, so he just didn't complete his secondary lap uh, after his first one was invalidated. At the final corner, he was on pretty good pace, and uh, I think he is uh, showing the qualifying gods that, hey, I know I might be number 22, but he's certainly uh, showing himself to be a good midfield player right now. He should be... Uh, interested to see it through his uh, improvement throughout the season. 
ended absolutely it's gonna be a very interesting and long season where we'll uh, see yes some uh, of uh, the regular drivers shine uh, but also a lot of new drivers coming to the series and uh, growing uh, and uh, becoming uh, even more uh, competitive in uh, such a competitive field already Uh, Berto sitting behind Lindstrom. Lindstrom has DRS open. Berto just sitting behind him at nose to gearbox. Swings it down to the inside at 130R. He's got his nose onto the inside. <laughs> it's a little bit fight on the brace right here. Lindstrom has the preferred line. Is going to stay right there. But Benjamin is applying a lot of pressure. It activates DRS again. And no one he did that because his back end kicked out just a little bit. And now they're having a dry race down the straight. Here comes Barreto. Looking around to the outside. Lindstrom activates DRS to, to try to defend. And he makes it work. But here comes Benjamin around the outside. They're side by side heading to the S's. And it's going to be Benjamin forcing his way up into 11th. Great pass. He worked for it uh, for a few laps now. And he made it work. And now... He will be looking to close up on burn for 10th. Let's uh, also see this replay from Dennis Cornu. Going for a pass on Enrico Berto. Pretty much identical okay. to what we uh, just saw. Just with different paint schemes. And uh, he made uh, the move right enter in turn one, making it a little bit easier for him. As uh, we go back uh, to our race leader for Ibrink and uh, our uh, gap comparison, lap time comparison. Uh, we can see Tarton closing 6 tenths in uh, lap 5, but uh, pretty much uh, very, very stable as uh, for second and third place. Gap opened up uh, a few laps ago when Samborski made a small mistake, but uh, he's still within uh, slipstream range. Yeah. Tarleton, I think, just used his last DRS uh, deployment. As here is Alessandro Roccatello. Uh, he's all by himself right now, and he's he got a kinked up today. front. Yeah, he's got a kinked up uh, front wing, and uh, yeah, that's taken to the garage and uh, blown up in true Italian fashion. Oh yeah, remind someone. Huh? in this boot uh, just uh, leaving straight out the races uh, when uh, the car was not working properly <laughs> as uh, Foli brings still the lead uh, in front of Tarton and Samborski Pinsky lost, lost a little bit of uh, time uh, to Samborski the gap is uh, now more than a second But uh, absolutely, a great drive so far for uh, Kentaro Yusa with the car number 16 uh, all the way up in fifth uh, in this uh, opening round uh, on home soil. Track temperature going up, costing 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, still pretty cool, so drivers shouldn't have uh, too many issues with tires today. Well, currently they don't have uh, any issue with tires. It's Tarleton gets a big gain on Ilbrink through there. And I, I really hope Iris gives us a DR. Oh, Tarleton. Back end getting a little foxy right there. And here yeah. comes Sam Borski into that draft now. Uh, they've dropped Pinkster from this group. Yeah, James... Uh Lost a bit of time in the last few laps uh, compared to Samborski that after that uh, small mistake managed to close uh, the gap down uh, very quickly. So we are uh, set for a very interesting second part of the race uh, with uh, a trio leading uh, Ilbrin Tarton and Samborski, three of the staples of this community. We have uh, someone having an issue. 
It's, uh, I think, Dennis Korn dropping down the order slightly. A mistake after passing Bertola a few laps ago. Here we go. He opened up a gap uh, on the Italian driver, but he was out of shape by accident. Here, he saved the car, Austin, which is uh, remarkable, but lost a valuable time there. Oh, no, 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 no. Tarleton's in the lead now. Uh, he's got past Ilbring. I think Ilbring might have had a little bit of a wiggle coming out of Spoon. And here is Spoon. Ilbring. Well, he was on the curves. It was very dangerous. And this has allowed Tarleton to get up into that draft. And he's already made that move. He went to the outside. Ilbring gave up around the outside right there. And didn't really fight hard to defend that from Tarleton. Did, did they just switch as soon as we cut off of them? Ooh. It'll break, no! Spanish so keep all four wheels on the track, though, but uh, it could have been worse. It tr truly has. It truly could have been worse. Still uh, plenty of laps left. Uh, also, some uh, slower traffic in front. Uh, they have uh, Emir car in front of them, who managed to come back on track uh, after uh, repairing uh, the front wing. This is not over for Fuel, uh, absolutely. He's uh, still within a second from Tarton. Anything can happen. And he certainly can, but it's always good to have a positive attitude like Edward Samborski does. Just look at that smile on his face. Oh, yeah, he's uh, always happy. Even though sometimes uh, he might come here and say he's not happy, he doesn't look like it when he's driving the car. You know, I was racing with uh, Edward around a hockey high ring, and, uh, you know, he took out three of his teammates right there, and he had a big old grin on his face. He was trying the Atal to start. Did not work well. No, you know, and also, in better news, I was not taken out in that incident. We know that uh, sometimes also Robert himself has a uh, not so good uh, start. Well, it is a tricky start. Um, it's, a, it's an entire clutch pedal start, so you got to be a little bit of trained with the clutch pedal, and Sam borsky has been training on there, and... Uh, He's been trying to perfect that uh, here and there. And we saw that didn't really work out for him off the start. And Tarleton had an amazing start. Jumped him right there. But Sam Wormsley back into second place. And uh, Paul Ilbrink. Oh, no. That is a car off into the wall through Dunlop. That's definitely not how you are supposed to let the people by and losing too much time. Uh, but... Yeah, it's not how the car behind is supposed to let people behind, but it's pretty much uh, what some GTE drivers expect of you in IMSA. Oh, yeah. That's true. But I also wanted to ask you a quick question, uh, Austin. Where did you buy Oki Ring? Okay, Oki I'm sorry. Like, when did I... <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> I know Germany might be quite cold in the winter, but uh, to have a full okay name uh, covered in ice, uh, it's uh, quite, a, quite a rare thing. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, I would like to remind everyone, uh, you at home, uh, wherever you are in the big world, that you can uh, join this series. Uh, it's an official uh, racing series. You can uh, get uh, some help. Uh, also from uh, some of our proud sponsors of the broadcast like uh, Apex Racing Academy or uh, Virtual Racing Schools, proud partner of Apex Racing TV with uh, 29 data packs, uh, setups, crack guides, uh, wiki group coaching sessions, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions also you can request. Uh, Apex Racing Academy is a valuable service uh, to help you get started also in this series. Uh, we also have our own Peter Berryman doing uh, the data pack for this uh, car and is also integrated with Virtual Racing School. Uh, so you can uh, have uh, everything together in one place uh, and also use their uh, data analysis software. 
Yeah, VRS a great tool as well as Apex Racing Academy. As Robert Dalton and Everett Samborski still in that nose tail fight with Paul Ilbrink uh, at the rear of it. And they're closing in on a Marquez. Yeah, Marquez having a tough day after that uh, opening uh, incident. But he's still going. About to be now well up down. Even some uh, nice draft to Tartu, he definitely wouldn't mind. But uh, I think Tartu only wants now to get some clean air and do some very good laps because. Yes, he's a first, but Samborski is looking very, very fast in his mirror. Yeah, Samborski can definitely apply some pressure. With the amount of DRS that Robert Tolton has been using, he's going to be very vulnerable at the end of this race. So I'm expecting uh, Samborski to uh, put on the charge a little bit later with uh, Paul Ilray because Robert Tolton tried to gain... Uh, P1 as fast as possible, but unfortunately, I believe it took him about a eight DRS uses. So he's been very aggressive on the front. Can he be able to defend that spot, though? Yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting. Hopefully, you 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 counted better than Amazon Web Services on uh, the F1 broadcast. As uh, we have uh, drivers using uh, all the curb here, it's very dangerous. Uh, you know, Suzuka. Uh, for being uh, sometimes a bit tricky with curves, especially a spoon. If you get the car on that uh, outside curve, uh, it might uh, ruin your day. Yeah, thankfully we don't have any uh, eight Amazon Web Services graphics saying, uh, oh, his right tire is currently at 3% and his left one is at 200. We have uh, Austin Night Services though. I am not a web service. We're still providing still uh, plenty of nice statistics uh, live uh, during the race. It's called counting. Uh, I'm not able to do that. <laughs> like counting on you to finish 15 minutes of a 12 hour race? <laughs> Indeed. Same Inner commentary periods. So here we have instead Jorge Lopez and Bo Dixon. We haven't really focused much on this battle. In, with uh, this uh, beautiful combination, I must say, from uh, Bill Dixon. Uh, nice uh, McLaren livery and uh, a fat uh, helmet. Uh, helmet. <laughs> nice to see all these uh, new liveries, uh, shining liveries uh, here on Apex Racing TV tonight. Yeah, we're very, we're very easy to please. Uh, anything that's shiny is uh, very pleasing to our eyes. Or, you know, has a funny backstory to it. As Charlton still leads out Sam Borski. And, uh, you know, with just about under eight laps to go, I think we're about to see uh, Edward to uh, get the hot shoes on. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, we don't have uh, many laps left now, so Ed, if he wants to get the move done, needs to think about it very quickly as he gets a little bit out of shape exiting Spoon. Lost uh, the front end, but uh, he will have uh, the draft now at disposal to close the gap a little. Still too far to even uh, try to think about it. Someone who would love this two to fight is definitely Polidri. About one second behind Samborski. But uh, seems like he is not able to close down the gap. You can see from uh, the last lap uh, to set for, from the drivers. 42-9 for Darto, 43 flat for Samborski, 43-1 for Hildring. 2-7 for James J. Pinsker, uh, looking to still get uh, that final point in spot. I feel like James 
he, he, he likes to do this uh, throughout the season. Just play it easy, play it safe. Uh, and when the time comes, well, he certainly knows how to bring it, uh, quote, the final round of last the last season. Uh, he, he was not holding back anything uh, unlike what he usually does. Oh, yeah, that's the reason why he won the title uh, in season one. By one point. Yeah, that was uh, even more dramatic than uh, the Glock uh, accident uh, in Monterlagos, I must say. Took uh, quite a while to me and Sam to get uh, a clear picture of the standings. Charlton, Scaff has fallen, so Sam Borsi he is gaining on the straight, but I'm not sure if that's by DRS, because you have two chances to use DRS here, uh, two areas where it's safe to use DRS, because you, uh, you can use DRS whenever you want, you use DRS on the front straight, you use DRS on the back straight, heck, you can use DRS in the middle of the hairpin like I accidentally done in practice. I think it's in the race, so it's even worse. Well, I couldn't find my push to talk. So I think I have the worst, I think I had the worst uh, reason to deploy it. But yeah, also the deploying your DRS is, is a, a quite interesting uh, racecraft. Uh, racecraft strategy. Yeah, strategy you need to develop in this car as I think we had uh, uh, almost a pass for 6 and 7. Oh. Yeah, Yusa got passed uh, by Lopez. Great battle here for 56 and 7. Yusa was in front of uh, these guys. He might have made a small mistake. Last time we checked, he had uh, still a sizable gap. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Just a lockup coming out of. Might have almost had too much mustard right there. He got away with it. Today the master count still stands at one. Having a look uh, from mm. another camera point. Well. I know Formula Drift is very, uh, drifting is very popular here in Japan, oh, so, you know, I would have, uh, I would have scored high, I would say. I got that a high score. I got a, got a good, good shot right here, uh, Ferrari McLaren, um, not McLaren McLaren like Marco just said in the commentary booth, uh, trying to make me have another Murrayism. I'm sorry for McLaren uh, and Ferrari fans, but I definitely Ooh. like the big Miwa. The TC Corsa driver having a wide ride at 130R, I think. Uh, TT Corsa, also the team uh, for Matsufumi Abarami, who was involved in that opening incident. And I feel like this is just DRS through what... Oh, okay, that's 130R plus a little bit of curve, plus a little bit of grass, plus DRS. Uh, Luckily, it did not end up in the wall, so he is fine. Um, except just a little bit warmer tires and maybe a racing art. Oh, yeah. That was uh, definitely a very wide ride for me while also having some trouble later uh, rejoining the track. After like the hot tires. Indeed. Hey, you know, you, you just need to go through the grass a little bit and then we cool down. I feel like you and I have different strategies of cooling down tires. Well, uh, cooling down the tires on the grass now seems to be a thing on the races. And Samborski has got DRS. He's looking out to the outside. Side side into the braking zone. Samborski lunges for the lead. Samborski through the chicane. Samborski into the lead and out of the chicane. Edward Samborski takes the lead here in Suzuka. And he used DRS to make that move happen. And now, Tarleton's in the draft. Tarleton's now down to the inside, heading into turn one. Tarleton not using DRS because he's out of DRS. Tarleton managed to get him back on the straight. This is fantastic racing here at Suzuka. Absolutely amazing scenes here. Lap 19, three more uh, laps to go. 
I think is definitely not over. Samborski don't to have got the P1, but uh, Sarton came back uh, with a great uh, power to get uh, that uh, P1 back. Ilbrink for sure, looking to see them fighting even more now. The hairpin Samborski needs to uh, find a strategy to get ahead and stay ahead of Charlton. He knows he can get him on the DRS. And I feel like with three laps to go, I that might be his strategy. Just wait for that moment. S just stay here as close as you can throughout the rest of this race. And uh, try to force either Charlton into a little small mistake. You see he's bobbling with his uh, car right there coming out of that corner. His tires are going out. And here comes Samborski back on Charlton. Scott DRS wide open. Goes down to the inside of 130R. This is very dangerous right here. Side by side, coming off the exit. Sam Borsky had no lift right there. Heading into the break is there. Tarleton going deep, locked up the brakes just slightly. And coming out of the exit, Tarleton stays ahead of Sam Borsky. Sam Borsky back in, giving a little bit of a wiggle right now. Sam Borsky opening up DRS once more. And now we got a drag race here at Suzuka. Sam Borsky trying to go onto the outside of Tarleton, heading into turn one. He goes side by side and no money for either of them as they stay in the same order. Why the same money for Tarleton? Great defensive uh, placement right there. Hey, look at uh, Paul bring now within a second from Tarleton. So if uh, this Nobody two, probably knows five. how this might end. Oh yeah, for sure. Sometimes uh, you just need to hang there, try to keep the car uh, within uh, a second or two and offer the best uh, for you and the worst for the guys in front. Thank you. But uh, I think these guys will uh, g give everything they got and keep it clean. They are uh, such a great uh, drivers and uh, we've seen them fight already multiple times. Uh, Multiple times, multiple seasons, and uh, you know, close racing always happens with a little bit of contact sometimes, and you know, that might happen here as uh, Tarleton leads out Samborski, and Samborski opens up DRS, and we got uh, Shirakawa going slow. And oh, Tarleton, he faked us all, he did have DRS in spare. Oh, yeah, that's a uh, And I am on web service to all of us. Okay. I told you. Ooh, Sam Borsky hopped that curb. Big hop right there. This isn't a BMX track, Edward. And white flag is in the air here in Suzuka. Exposito under Yusa. Ooh, Yusa going down to the inside. Trying to do what Talton likes to do. Get him off the exit. It's not going to work, but he activates DRS. Ferrari power of this Renault power. That made sense in my head when I said it. Going down the straight and Yusa up into fifth at his home race. Yeah, great pass using that to the RS. Uh, but they will now uh, hopefully have one more coming back uh, on the back stretch uh, in a... Uh, few corners uh, because uh, Lopez uh, will be definitely trying to get the position back as uh, up front uh, the gap is still six tenths. Uh, Samborski might be a little bit too far but uh, never say never in Formula Yeah, never say never to anything as but Tarleton, he's putting the hammer down. He is making all the bulls work for him. All the horses run. So he's pulled out a seven tenth gap to Sam Borsky coming out of the hairpin and heading into Spoon. Sam Borsky needs to wish for a little bit of magic to happen, but here comes Paul Ilbring. He's gonna try to do his own little magic right here. As Tarleton, seven tenths leading into 7.5 tenths of a second, lead over second and third place as we got a big draft race. DRS final time open for Tarleton. Say so head through 130R for one last time into the triangle hairpin. It's going to be a massive dive onto the brakes for all of these guys trying to maximize their lap time. But Robert Tarleton, he managed to stay in first and defend that spot. Tarleton wins round one here at Suzuka, followed by Sam Borski and Ilbrink completing our podium. Katar Yusa. Coming out of the final chicane. He's managed to jump up into fifth place with one lap to go. And in front of his home race, 
He's going to finish in fifth, followed by Exposito and Bo Dixon with Josh Stewart and Theodore Burns and Jamie Byrne completing out our top ten. Barato in 11th place, our biggest move, plus 13. In the meantime, we also get told that the start on Saturday, the fastest lap of the race, on the final lap of the race, so... Impressive run, you can see, 142.355. Best good drive from uh, Robert Arton. I, I met him uh, in a race today, and uh, he was uh, freaking fast, and he definitely showed that uh, he's the uh, one to look uh, at for the title challenge. Uh, it's gonna be difficult for Pinsel to maintain the title, to do be the king uh, at the end of uh, season two. It, it seriously is looking more competitive right now as Robert Tarleton, well, takes the win and uh, the lead of the championship. So that is going to be... Yeah. I'm sorry, Marco, what? Marco be Marco. Marco is confusing me. Thanks, Marco. As we look at our results, Robert Tarleton takes the win, followed by Edward Samborski, Paul Ilberg, James Pinkster, Kentaro Yusa, Jorge Lopez, Bo Dixon, Josh Stewart, Theodore Burns, Jamie Bird, Benjamin Barato, Erica Lindstrom, Yuki Shirakawa, Kota Miwa, and Rico Bertot, Dennis Corno, Johan Quinn, Eduardo Marquez, Mir Carr, and Alessandro Rocatello in 20th place. Followed by uh, Andreas Perez, Lite, Francisco Ramirez, Masafumi Abrahami, and Rob Crouch, all of them who were involved in uh, that lap one collision, which uh, brought out quite a lot of feelings with some of the drivers. I know uh, they were having a little bit of conversation in our YouTube live chat. As uh, we are now joined by our winning drivers. And uh, Marco, who do we have first? Let's see. I'm not Marco, but I guess Austin has a brain fart. <laughs> so let's bring in our uh, race winner, Robert Arton, doing an amazing race today. He had uh, one of his uh, amazing starts and uh, capitalized on that, uh, scoring his uh, first broadcast uh, victory in uh, season one, in season two of 2021. Great. Yep. Thanks, guys. Um, it was definitely a really tough race. Um, I, we we're pretty evenly matched. I think the top, like the, the three of us. And at first I thought I could just sit behind Ilbrink and hopefully pull a gap um, in front of the guys behind us, but it looked like Samborski had too much pace. So I tried to just get past Ilbrink, but maybe a little bit too aggressive because uh, we lost a bit of time. So I just decided to you know, sit back a little bit wait for a good time to pass uh i think he got a little bit loose coming out of um uh is it i think it's spoon and i was able to just go right by him on the, the straight and then after that it was just a, a matter of just putting down clean laps and uh you know hopefully pull a gap didn't end up being the case samborski was able to stay right behind me um i had used up a lot of my drs battling ilbrink and we had a couple uh tough tough battles there i think he had he was deploying his extra drs that he had on me and then once we got down to the last couple laps i was able to deploy the remaining drs i had and it was pretty smooth sailing yeah thankfully austin uh, miscounted your drs usage in the first uh, part of the race and you got some spare for the end it was a very very nice uh, battle with ed next week uh, we are uh, moving to a uh, different track, a uh, track uh, that uh, is been uh, run also has been run last season at Imola. So we go back to Italy. Are you looking forward for that? It's definitely a different uh, track with uh, a different flow and uh, a bit more difficult to pass. Nice. Yeah, I actually enjoy Imola a lot, um, just because there's a lot of um, time that you can gain with like little um, nuances, I guess. And it just takes a lot of focus and it's one of those tracks that really um, penalizes you if you make a mistake um originally i wasn't like too huge a fan of it too big of a fan of it but 
um, over the seasons, I've definitely grown to like it, and I think it's probably up there in my top five tracks. Well, definitely, we are looking forward for that one already because every week uh, this uh, broadcast race uh, provides uh, some amazing content. Anyone you would like to thank, Robert, before we let you go? Uh, I'd say uh, I'd like to thank um, both Ilbrink and Ed for really tough and clean racing. I did slide a little bit wide into, I think it's either turn one or turn two, so um, props to Ilbrink for keeping us from colliding. Um, and then uh, otherwise, uh, you guys for the great broadcast. Well, thank you very much and uh, see you in one week time. Great, thanks. So, Austin, I think we can uh, move on to someone you know very, very well, who is uh, right uh, on your side uh, in the commenter book. Yeah, I'm standing by with uh, Everson Borsi. Ed, uh, you tried that uh, Taunton start, I guess. No, I wish. I was just garbage. I was. I reacted way too late. To be honest with you, I mean, I was taking a nap, having a sip of tea, and watching Sebring. I guess. <laughs> Did your cat hop onto your lap at the start as well? No. You know what though? You know what's funny about that is I forgot to close the door, so I was I was kind of looking around, and then I saw the red lights. So I was like, all right, well, I'm fine. And then I just just terrible reaction time, to be honest with you. <laughs> Mm, well, thankfully, you uh, finished second place. Uh, you finished where you started, but, you know, you did manage to avoid a, a big incident right behind you. So, hey, you managed to uh, keep your head up and uh, stay in there with a good start throughout the season. Absolutely. As much as I wanted to win, um, it wasn't worth a crash or doing anything stupid that I've managed in the last few weeks. So I just was like, you know, I mean, I made one critical error. I was that Robert had one more DRS than he did though so I was planning to it was a rehearsal were, that first pass were you using uh, were you listening to the live stream and were you using Austin web services no I was good trying I cannot count. be blamed for this yeah, yeah no <laughs> no I uh, I was watching the relative all race and every time he pulled the gap down the back straight I was like all right well that's got to be one that's got to be one and when I got by him, I should have used one down the front straightaway. I think it m he may not have been able to pass me back. I, I don't know. I mean, we were very equal. It would have been hard to say. So other than that, great race. Can't complain, you know? Yeah, next week it is Imola. How are you feeling about that race? I uh, I like Imola. That track is brutal. Um, you have to be better than pinpoint precision. You need to be lucky. So if I can survive the laps and have another race like this week without any colossal mishaps or mistakes or failures, I will be very pleased. All right. Well, thank you, Edward. Congrats on second place. Before we let you go, anyone you want to thank? Uh, thank you guys for doing the broadcast. Uh, thank the fellow drivers for not killing me. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Have a good <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, man. You have yourself a good afternoon. All right. Thank you, you guys, as well. And over to Alessandro Daladane, who is standing by with Paul Ilbrink. Yeah, we have time for a quick chat with Paul, who today has uh, to blame uh, only Austin uh, for not uh, having uh, got a win, uh, because uh, Austin cursed you multiple times during the broadcast, so if you got only third, it's his fault. Yeah, I think he uh, said a lot about me last season as well. That uh, explains a lot. But, uh, yeah. Thank Alessandro. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> like a good start and stuff from Paul. I uh, managed to hold uh, Robert behind. But uh, yeah, I had like a moment out of spoon, lost the lead there. Then uh, at the same lap, had a moment out of the final chicane. So that cost me P2. And that was also the time that I figured out that my sixth gear was too short, so uh, I was like bouncing off the limiter all the time in the draft, so I couldn't like overtake on pace anyway. So I was just uh, hoping for Austin to say something about uh, Robert and uh, Eddie to get me back in the lead, but unfortunately, I guess he didn't. Well, to be fair, it could have been much worse with that uh, alpha spin that issued you had. Uh, it could, uh, you could have uh, actually ended up uh, much more 
bad then uh, actually happened so a third place to, st to start the season in this uh, broadcast race uh, is definitely not a bad result and uh, i bet you are eager to come back next week uh, in italy at Imola even stronger sure yeah uh the pole tastes good so i'll try to uh, get another one next week and uh, see if i can do better from there anybody you would like to thank uh, paul before we let you go uh yeah sure you guys for uh doing a nice broadcast, except for Austin uh, cursing me. Um, my teammates at Radicals Online and a partner sponsor, Armor Center, and Grand Field Simulation, Track Racer, Joe, Real Timing, Turn Racing, Emily Tiff Podcast, Six Sideways, and Pixel Dust, and everybody for rating this nice series. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Paul. Have a good night. Thanks. Hi, right, Austin. We... I think we can cap uh, this uh, broadcast off uh, after another uh, great night of uh, racing here at beautiful Suzuka International Racing Circuit. Yeah, we certainly can. And I want to say thank you to everyone who uh, joined here in the commentary box, in the chat, and on the live stream here for the IRC Formula 2 3.5 Championship start of Season 2. You're watching Apex Racing TV. I've been joined by Alessandro Daladane and Marco Barbonera in the broadcasting booth. I'm Austin Knight, and I hope y'all have a good night.